All right, hello again, pre-calculus people. Uh, so in today's video, uh, we're going to talk about a different way to measure angles uh, called radian measurement. Uh, so I know you're very, you're, you, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, measuring angles and degrees and all that good stuff like that. There's another way, which, as we get into trigonometry, that's, that becomes much more important and useful called radians. So the first part of these notes here, if you kind of want to, want to pause the video or take a look at those, it kind of goes through in a, a quick little activity of how to see what a radian is and kind of how we go about converting from uh, radians to degrees and degrees back to radians. So in the interest of time, uh, I'm not going to do the whole activity start to finish, but here is what it will end up looking like at the end. Basically what I did is I took the length of the radius just with a piece of string and then took that same length and kind of stretched it around the arc of the circle. And you can see where it ended up at that end point right there. And I just made a mark and then drew another radius down to the center. Whenever that happens, and it doesn't matter how big the circle is, but when the arc, that the angle intercept is equal to the radius length, we call that angle one radian. Uh, now, if you're curious, it comes out to be just a little bit over 57 degrees. You don't really need to know that. Uh, but that is the definition of a radian, when the arc length is equal to the radius. Okay. But how, how does that help us do conversions? Well, if you see my, the other marks that I made on the paper here, basically what I did is I took that same distance, that same radius length, and just made some more marks. So there's my second radius length, there's the third, there's the fourth, there's the fifth, there's the sixth. So if you think about it, you'll notice there's a little bit more than three of the radius lengths, or a little bit more than three radians, in half circle, 180 degrees. If you think about a number that you have used for a long time, that's a little bit more than three, that is the magic number. So it turns out there's exactly pi radians in 180 degrees. Okay, and this is what you got to know. So if you write anything down during this video, make it be this. So 180 degrees is equal to pi radians, because that's how we're going to do our conversions. It's also important to know, though, that for a whole circle, 360 degrees, that's going to be equal to 2 pi radians. And you see there's just more than 6 of them, so that's where the 2 radians come from. But this is the big one right here. So how do we do this? How do we convert from radians to degrees? Well, we use exactly what we just said, right? We know there's 180 degrees in uh, pi radians. So this is our conversion factor right here. This is definitely something, I don't care who your pre -cal teacher is, this is something you have to know, like no, no, okay? So I'm going to start with degrees, multiply by pi over 180. Now the good news is we don't need to worry too much about the pi. The pi is going to be part of the answer. So the only thing we're going to do is to simplify the fraction 120 over 180. So if you, do, if you think of 1 divided by 180, simplify the fraction, it comes out to be 2 thirds. So I would write that as either 2 thirds pi or 2 pi over 3. Most commonly, you'll see it written like this, um, but either one of those would be correct. Okay, so start with degrees, multiply by pi over 180, simplify the fraction, and then you have your radians. Okay, so do this again, pi over 180. And notice, I'm not taking the time to go through how to simplify fractions. You should know how to do that without a calculator. All, it's, all we're doing is simplifying those numbers. So 195 over 180 is 13 over 12. So again, 13 pi over 12. If you want to pause the video for just a minute and do these last two on your own, and then I'll go through and double check, and you can double check your answers. So again, the negative doesn't matter. The answer is going to be negative. 
So 15 over 180, if you simplify that, that's 1 over 12. Or you can also see that written as just pi over 12 would be fine too. Either one is okay like that. And then 400 over 180, remember that take, that's taking an extra lap around the circle, but that's okay. That's going to come out to be 20 pi over 9 for the radians. So simplifying, or not simplifying, converting degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180, simplify the fraction, leave the pi in the answer. So take a wild guess. Take it, what do you think, if I start with radians and I want to go back to more familiar territory in degrees, what do you think I would do? Well, instead of multiplying by pi over 180, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. Okay? So we're going to do that on these examples here. The nice thing about these, 95% of the time, when you have an angle written in radians, it's going to have a pi involved. Sometimes, especially textbook questions, may not have a pi, but almost always radian measures are written in terms of pi. Okay? So again, simplify the fraction. Notice the pi's just cancel out. So 5 times 180 divided by 4, or you can do that as 180 divided by 4. Do that part first, make the number smaller, multiply by 5. Either way, this would come out to be 225 degrees. Okay? So we're always doing that same thing, 180 over pi, 180 over pi, and just simplifying the answer, and usually the pi is going to cancel out. So if you want to do those three, pause the video, and I'll go through the answers here in just one moment. Okay, so simplifying this fraction, again, 180 divided by 15 times 7 would be 84. Simplify this fraction would be negative 190. And then 7 pi over 3 times 180 over pi, simplify that fraction is going to be 420. Now, the last thing we're going to do in this video, if you remember the previous video we talked about uh, real quickly, um, coterminal angles with degrees, where all we had to do was add or subtract 360 to find those, you know, like when the angle basically takes a lap. We can do the same thing with radians. If you remember from that picture at the beginning of the video, we know there's pi radians in half a circle, so there was two pi radians in a whole circle. Whole circle 360 degrees, it's the same thing. So now for radians, we're going to be adding or subtracting 2 pi. Now, the only bad news, I guess, here is we are going to have to deal with some fractions, uh, but it's super easy. So let's go and do this first one 4 pi over 5 plus 2 pi. So again, we can just multiply that by our common denominator, which in this case is 5. So that becomes 4 pi over 5 plus 10 pi over 5, which is 14 pi over 5. And then for the minus coterminal, for the negative coterminal, we've already done the work. So now it's 4 pi over 5 minus 10 pi over 5, which is a 6 pi over 5, negative 6 pi over 5. Okay, now you probably noticed I left the quadrant blank. Listen, at some point, you should get to the point where you can just recognize, oh, 4 pi over 5 is just a little bit less than 1, so it's going to be in quadrant 2 or whatever. Until you get that comfort level, it is okay if you take that initial question, convert it back to degrees using your 180 over pi conversion factor. That comes out to be 144, which, again, we see this in quadrant 2. So last time, if you want to pause the video one more time and find your coterminal angles for these two angles and find the quadrants, and I'll go through the answers here in just a second. So for the coterminal, again, we're adding or subtracting 2 pi, 
which if my denominator is nine, two pi is equal to 18 pi over nine. So that's 17 pi over nine. And if I subtract it, that gives me negative 19 pi over nine. For the quadrant, if you, if you convert, that's equal to negative 20 degrees. And remember, negative angle goes uh, clockwise, kind of goes backwards, if you will. So that's going to be down in quadrant four. And then for seven pi over six, we're going to add uh, 12 pi over six. Again, adding two pi. So it's going to be 19 pi over six. And if I subtract that same thing, I get negative five pi over six. And then for the conversion, seven pi over six is equal to 210 degrees. So that's up in quadrant three. Okay. So just to recap, one radian happens when the arc of the, when the arc of the angle is equal to that radius length, that's equal to one radian. There are pi radians in a half circle, two pi radians in a full circle, converting degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180, leave the pi in the answer. Converting radians back to degrees, multiply by 180 over pi, the pi's will almost always cancel out, simplify the fraction. Coterminal angles, Add or subtract 2 pi, get your common denominator, and then find the quadrant. If you have some questions, email or talk to your teacher. Until next time, stay safe.